Hello, one all. You Duck Stone Chapter 211, World Tour for Resources. And finally, after 211 chapters, Senko and the gang have managed to acquire rice. Huzzah! In many, many different forms. Very few of which I can actually recognize. I mean, seriously. This, this is my rice right here. I microwave for 60 seconds, then I add salt. But that is how I eat. I'm a very, very simple man, but... No, for the people of Japan, rice is literally part of their culture. I mean, I've read so many isekai series where the characters have gone to just incredible, incredible lengths just to acquire rice. I mean, even edgelord characters like Hajime from Arafuretza were willing to go out of their way to manage to get, you know, a taste of their homeland. And in that time, get reincarnated as a slime, Rimuru has an entire team of researchers dedicated to growing rice to taste just like it does back in Japan, cultivating it and crossbreeding it time and time again, just to get a little bit closer to the rice he remembers from his homeland. So yeah, not surprising that Sanku, you know, really went all out to get himself some rice right here. In fact, uh, the Dr. Stone trivia page actually pointed out something rather interesting. Thailand has even more rubber than Indonesia does, but they have much less rice, meaning that Sanku might have chosen Indonesia simply for the fact that it had more rice. Simply for the fact they wanted to harvest a whole bunch of rice here, which... <laughs> oh my god, that would be an utterly, utterly amazing thing for him to do. That's so... I want to say not Senko, it's so emotionally driven, but at the same time, it's so practical because, you know, it's getting him both the rubber and the rice he needs to motivate the people back in Japan. Double huzzah! Though honestly, at this point, I was really expecting them to skip Indonesia simply because, you know, it wasn't mentioned last chap, they haven't talked about it ever since, and they were able to get, you know, rubber back in uh, South America, but no, apparently they did need to go to Indonesia. For one thing, because they get so, so much more rubber there than they were able to, you know, get in South America. And, you know, like I said before, they also want the freaking rice. <laughs> oh, I love you, Senku. I freaking love you. And Senku's plan is basically to bring a bunch of rice back with him to Japan. So when he wakes up everybody and gives it to them, they'll be more motivated and inspired to do the hard manual labor to help Senku build a rocket and go to the moon, which... You know, it's not a terrible, terrible idea, and it's something we have seen in the other cities. When they first, you know, woke up everyone back in Spain, they had a full, accurate Spanish meal waiting for them to show them, listen, respect your culture, respect your people, and we're not here to invade you, we're not here to overthrow you, we're not here to colonize you, we want to work with you. And now they're going back to Japan with rice, they'll be able to say, hey, fellow Japanese people, this is the food of our people, this is the food of our ancestors, uh, why don't we all work together to, you know, basically build a rock and get me to the moon? It might work. It might work. Though, like I've said many, many times before, I am still expecting one final big bad boss before we actually get to the moon, before we actually get to the Y-Man. Maybe Ryu's uncle, maybe some other people they wake up who don't want to, you know, do things the way Senku wants, who want to take over, gain new power in this new world. Uh, maybe. I'm not sure about that, but maybe. And we also get to see size less into Chrome and Suka, which... It's a little bit worrying. I mean, I'm fairly certain all we're seeing here is, you know, him teaching them to find the area of a triangle, which is fairly simple math. I mean, fairly, you know, high school level math. And Chrome already looks like he's sweating. Suka definitely looks at least a little bit confused. And this is, you know, very, very simple math. I mean, they need to go from this to rocket scientists in a fairly short amount of time. Or I guess you could say a reasonably short amount of time because they were actually in Indonesia for quite a while. I mean, they grew rice. They actually planted and harvested rice. Apparently it takes like uh, three, four months. So yeah, they had a lot of time to learn from Sai and they probably, you know, went past simple geometry, but very, very curious how those lessons are going. We also get to see Koski build an Archimedes screw, which, interesting, very, very interesting piece of technology right there. Uh, I was not expecting that, I'm not really sure what it's doing, I guess it's either emptying out the water around them, or it's pouring the water into the rice field, yeah, I guess it's pouring the water into the rice fields, so they can, you know, actually plant the rice crops. And we even have the mobile science lab built into something, I'm not really sure what this is supposed to be, but it's helping them actually plant the crops, which... Interesting. I mean, seriously, this could have been like, you know, four or five chapters on its own, just going to all the detail and why they're building all this, what's doing, exactly what's happening here. And I kind of wish they had. I kind of wish they had. But anyway, though, another advantage to them being in Indonesia is the fact that it's near the equator, meaning they can just keep planting rice every single freaking season, which... Oh god, just utterly, utterly blows Kohaku's mind as she's so confused about how a land cannot have winter in it, which... Yeah, you know what? Fair enough, fair enough. Trying to explain how there are different seasons in different parts of the world to someone who's, you know, has only ever known winter as this 
awful, terrifying, inevitable force would be very, very horror. But, you know, they have been on a fairly long expedition with her. I feel like at some point that should have been explained to her. I, maybe she just forgot about it. Maybe they didn't bother. But anyway, in order to make the rice grow big and strong, they need some top-notch fertilizer, which they make out of wood ash, nitric acid, and phosphorite. And it's actually rather interesting. They got the phosphorite from the island of Nauru. I mean, for one thing, it is, you know, not on the way at all to Indonesia. Seriously, they had to go completely in the opposite direction to reach Nauru and then come back around. <laughs> it actually kind of reminds me of the time I convinced my family that on the way back from a road trip to Texas, we should stop by Florida because it was on the way. <laughs> oh god, it was not on the way at all, and that was a very, very stressful week. But on the bright side, I managed to go to Epcot, and that was a lot of fun. But anyway, though, despite the island of Nauru being a rather small place with only a population of about 10,000, during the 60s and 70s, it was one of the richest nations on Earth because it's absolutely freaking covered in albatross guano, which was shipped out of there, you know, by the ship and made the island so very, very much money, like hundreds of millions of dollars. Unfortunately, they kind of ran out of albatross guano after a while and they did not manage the money all that well. I mean, in their defense, they never had to handle, you know, dealing with hundreds of millions of dollars before, and the financial advisors they brought in, you know, were not all that great and kind of bankrupted them and convinced them to finance a musical about Shakespeare that did not do all that well at all. So yeah, a very interesting island with a very interesting history, which is, you know, basically inhospitable now, or almost inhospitable, because there's no actual farmland on the island, and all the mining for phosphate kind of, you know, destroyed everything else. So... Yeah, very, very dark history, but regardless, I'm not really sure how much albatross guano they could actually find in the island right now, given it was all, you know, uh, mined out in the past. Though it has been about 3,000 years, so I guess it is possible that, you know, the birds managed to resupply the island with guano. <laughs> uh, not sure about that, not sure about that. Uh, anyway, though, that's just an interesting little tidbit I wanted to include, because I actually had heard of this island before, and I was very proud of myself for that. Huzzah! But anyway, though, then they manage to harvest the rice, and Ukyo is literally brought to tears as he eats it. <laughs> oh my god, I love it. I freaking love it. Even with him saying, you know, I didn't really like it back in my past life. I didn't really like it back when I was living in Japan before, but now I, I just don't understand why am I getting so emotional here. It's because, you know, this is literally the food of his homeland. This reminds him of his home, and, you know, he just really, really wants to go back there now. And I'm actually a little bit concerned about this because, you know, next page it says, Remaining time to complete the lap around the world, Japan, two days. Yeah, the fact they put a timeline on that really worries me. Really, really worries me. I mean, I don't think, you know, next chapter is going to start off with them saying, Hey, we're in Japan. Huzzah. I'm more afraid it's going to start with them, you know, basically being on the way to Japan and something happening. Something interrupting them. Something, you know, basically getting in their way. Something uh, that either prevents them from actually reaching Japan or causes, you know, them to suffer some sort of losses before they actually get there. I'm not really sure what that could be at this point. I mean, it has been, you know, three, four months since I started the lessons with uh, Chrome and Suka. So maybe, you know, in that time, they've learned enough where they can figure it out and they want to basically pose to Senku, listen up, we want to do the return rocket. Suka and I understand the math now. I mean, that would be a very, very short amount of time for actually learning the math, but uh, maybe, maybe. And she does actually raise a large question. Where exactly in the story are we right now? Because... I mean, they just, you know, floored through the basic entire world exploration. I mean, it's in 10 chapters since they left South America. And at the time, they went to Spain, uh, India, Australia, Indonesia, and now they're heading back to Japan. That's a lot of material they put into a very, very small number of chapters. So it feels almost like they're rushing towards the end. But are they? Or were they just rushing through this one part of the story because it's not all that interesting? Because they didn't want to you know, introduce new characters in each of these places and have the people, you know, get close to them, they have to include them down the road, because the cast, you know, is already quite large. I mean, at the very least, I would have loved to see more about them building the Archimedes screw, about them, you know, building whatever the mobile science lab is here that lets them, you know, uh, plant and harvest rice. So very many questions about that. Uh, but, yeah, so what's going to happen when they actually get to Japan? Are they just going to, you know, uh, have, like, two, three chapters, then building a rock, and then, oh, hey, listen up, we're going to the moon by chapter uh, 220, chapter 230. I mean... Maybe, I, I could see that being the case, but like I said before, I really do think there's going to be another big bad before they actually launch the rocket, before they actually get to the moon. I mean, I said many, many times already that I think Ryu's uncle will be that big bad. Basically, he wants to reclaim his company, take control over, you know, this new age, and Senko and the rest of them, you know, they're going to have to deal with him, deal with him inhibiting the rocket growth, rocket plans, and maybe even working with him, maybe even agreeing to his deals in order to get the materials they need to actually build the rocket, to actually get things up and running. 
I mean, I would like to see that. I would definitely like to see that. And I really can't imagine any other, you know, big, bad threat we could actually really face right now other than, you know, uh, old timers, modern agers who want to reclaim old power, who want to basically, you know, put the rocket in jeopardy for the sake of managing to obtain power for themselves. Also, if they are actually going to, you know, start building this rocket, how long was that going to take? Because, I mean, there's no way they can say, okay, listen up, we're going to get a rocket right now, we're going to go up into space. I mean, they need to do test after test after test launch. I mean, even right now, uh, Tesla's trying to, was it Tesla was trying to launch rockets, which went up in the air and then landed back down on their bottom like that? I think that was. I think it was Tesla. Anyway, though, uh, and a lot of those tests, they exploded. They exploded very, very quickly. And that was with, you know, modern day technology. Same with the rest of them. I mean, yes, they're certainly more gifted than the people who made the original rockets that went up in space. They certainly have more knowledge. But at the same time, rocketry is not easy. And it is so, so much room for failure. Very, very curious about that. Oh, also, uh, what's going to happen when they actually do get to the moon? Because... You know, is it just going to be, you know, oh, that we're going to fight the Y-Man five chapters later? We beat the Y-Man! Let's go back to Earth! Because that feels unlikely. It feels very, very unlikely. I mean, I've said before, I forget when I said this, but I said that uh, basically uh, the Y-Man is the Spiral King from Gurren Lagann, and his big plan of petrifying the Earth was to save them from the Anti-Spiral, a bigger, bigger bad that's out there somewhere in the universe that wants to destroy Earth. And, you know, the whole do you want to die comment the Y-Man made before is basically him saying, listen up, there's somebody coming after you, and if they read your radio signals, if they detect life on this planet, they will come here and they will murder every last one of you or enslave you or destroy the Earth or something like that. That's why I petrified all of you until they, you know, go away, until they disappear, until uh, they wipe themselves out. Then you guys can wake up. I'm not sure about that. I'm very, very not sure about that. Please link all down below. Uh, do you think it's going to happen in the two days it's going to take them back to Japan? Is Chrome going to confront Senku about wanting to build a return rocket when they actually get back to Japan? Is anyone going to re- freaking react to Suka? I so, so want to see people freaking reacting to Suka. I mean, seriously. Seriously. Oh my god, she's five years older, or actually more than five, six, seven years older at this point. I'm actually not sure of the timeline, though I think for the rest of them, we're petrified for a longer period of time. It's been at least a good three years since they actually went back to Japan, to their homelands. So yeah, there's gonna be a lot of tears, a lot of tears over that, and oh god, please, please, just give that moment the time it deserves. Let us really, you know, just savor the tears, and the reunion, and the crying, and the hugging. I wouldn't mind if, if the entire chapter was just everyone hugging and crying. I would be perfectly, perfectly fine with that and i think most of the fan base would be as well uh anyway after that what is going to happen will there be another big dad will how will he interfere with them building the rocket and getting to the moon and what's going to happen when they actually get to the moon what is the y man what's waiting for them up there what sort of answers will they find uh do you think it's luna's father and ryu's uncle or the y man do you think it's senku's true biological father uh do you think it's a rogue ai do you think it's an alien what are your thoughts uh anyway that'll link all down below be sure to like subscribe to the video and until then peace